Hello, my name is Robert Russell, and this is my process speech. Today I want to help you to try not to become a statistic from shoveling snow. Shoveling snow can be very physical and it can be very dangerous. <clears throat> In a news article from the EHS Today, um, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission stated that more than 118,000 were treated for injuries from shoveling snow in the year 2007. Also in that same year, there was 15,000 that were treated for injuries for the, with the use of uh, snow blowers. <clears throat> Many times the chore of uh, shoveling snow around the house and removing snow from sidewalks or driveways is just looked at as, another, is looked at as just another household chore. Many times uh, we look at it that way and shoveling snow requires heavy lifting and can be uh, very dangerous due to it being a physical activity. So we need to be prepared when we're shoveling snow. If we're not normally involved in a daily exercise activity, we might not be proper, properly uh, physically fit for shoveling snow. So we need to be prepared. We need to prepare our bodies before we go out and shovel snow. <clears throat> in another uh, news article from the EHS Today, American Academy of Orthopedic uh, Surgeons, also known as AAOS, provide the tips on how to properly prepare yourself for shoveling snow. One of the recommend, recommendations was five to ten minutes of sh uh, exercise, light exercises before you go out and uh, shovel snow. This way to warm up your muscles, keep you and help you to avoid uh, injuries. You might do things like jumping jacks. You might do any kind of things to, you know, just warm up the muscles, stretching, <clears throat> go out, walk around the house, just five to ten minutes of light exercises to get prepared for shoveling snow. And this is going to reduce your chances of, uh, you know, injuries, sprains, possibly straining your back, or even worse, a heart attack. If you're ever out shoveling snow and you experience uh, lightness or shortness of breath or chest pains, you need to seek immediate uh, medical attention immediately. And then, so take a little time and warm up your uh, muscles, you know, before you go out and get properly prepared so you can avoid those unwanted injuries. The AA AAOS also provides tips on how to get properly dressed when you go out into the elements. Layers of clothing. <clears throat> you might wear a, a jersey shirt like I got on, long sleeve t-shirt, and then you also might put a hooded, hooded uh, cotton sweatshirt on, <clears throat> and then something a little heavier over that. <clears throat> and this is going to give us layers to protect us from the elements. So when we go out in the cold, it's going to not only repel, but it's going to insulate us from the cold. So then as we warm up, as we normally do, as you do this kind of physical activity, you can start peeling those layers off, and that way you don't overheat. Also, it's a good idea to drink plenty, plenty of fluids to keep hydrated, because just like if you go to the gym or go jogging, you want to make sure that you drink plenty of uh, liquids, because this is a very physical activity. <clears throat> so and then another thing that we need to pick out is gloves. Um, gloves, we want to wear a good pair of gloves, um, insulated gloves that uh, keep our hands warm. Not only do they keep us warm, but they protect us from the handles of the shovels or other objects. You also might just use a pair of light cotton gloves if that's uh, your best choice. <clears throat> and then we need to pick out a hat. If you pick out a hat or a scarf when shoveling snow, you might uh, make sure that one, if you have one that's like this, you want to make sure that the eye holes are big enough so you can see your view is not blocked so you might not stumble, prevent you from stumbling on the uh, slippery surface. Um, another thing, you want to make sure that you have good shoes. <clears throat> shoes that have good traction when you're on the slippery surface. You don't want to get out there with, you know, your Sunday best shoes and get out there and slip around and fall on the ground. <clears throat> so um, those are some of the uh, things you need to dress, as the AAOS has stated. Um, they've given us some good tips on dressing. So you're all limbered up. You've got your muscles warmed up. You've got on the right clothing. Clothing. Now it's the uh, now it's time to pick out the proper shovel. You have many different types of shovels. One of the best shovels that I think are, are what they have recommended is the plastic shovel. The plastic shovel is lightweight. You don't require much, uh, much, much effort to move it in the snow. Um, a good choice. And another uh, shovel is the steel shovel. It's a little bit heavier, but it gives you the uh, edge here, the um, steel edge for uh, scooping under the ice surfaces, you know, or to uh, maybe if you need to chop it up to move it. That would be a good choice. <clears throat> and then you have the um, smaller shovel. It's still metal. you got the metal edge. But notice it's just a small, small curved shovel. 
and it's good for pushing snow. Um, pushing snow is recommended um, above lifting because once you start lifting the snow, that's where you get your injuries or strains. But if you have to lift it, you know, lift it when small amounts. And then the other shovel um, is a choice is the ergonomically correct shovel. How many people in here have heard of the ergonomically correct? <clears throat> Just a few? I'd have to say that that's the first time I've ever heard it called that. And one of the things they call it that is because it's got the curved handle and, and you can uh, get a hold of it like this and a good grip and it keeps your back straight. You know, you bend your knees, keeps your back up straight, keeps you from going down with the other ones like you have to bend over. So they call that the ergonomically correct shovel. And when I was talking about the grip, the grip is important. You know, if you grab this shovel and you grip way up here, you're not going to have much leverage. You need to get your hands spread apart and that's the way this handle is designed like that. Gives you good grip, gives you good leverage, <clears throat> gives you good balance. So another thing too to pay attention, not only the grip, but your feet. Where's your feet? You know, if you stand on your feet close together, you're not going to do very well on slippery surface. So you need to be about shoulder width apart with your feet. You need to be bending your knees, and when you bend your knees, you can keep your back straight, and that helps us again to avoid injuries. So, so we're all warmed up, we're dressed, we got the proper dress, we're ready to go out and shovel snow. So in my closing, let's review some pointers. Okay, we're warmed up. We've got those muscles, you know, ready to go out. You know, we can go out and possibly and hopefully not become a statistic, statistic and we can avoid those injuries. So we've got the proper dress. We've got the layers of clothing. We've got the gloves that protect our hands and keep our hands warm. We've got the hat that doesn't block our views. And then also we have the shoes that provide good traction on slippery surface. Another thing to mention is the best time to shovel snow is when it first comes down. If the snow is light and fluffy and you get right out there and get on it, it's going to be a lot easier to shovel than when it's compacted. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing we talked about was pushing snow. It's better to push snow than it is to lift it. And if you have to lift it, lift it a little at a time. But pace yourself. Take your time. If you get tired, take a break. But remember, if you're not uh, physically capable of shoveling snow, get somebody to help you or else pay to have somebody to do it. So the next time that you're shoveling snow, I hope you remember this process of shoveling snow pro uh, safely. Thank you.